the present video is the first video prepared on the unit of uh, electronic devices and uh, the subunit of semiconductor physics being the first subunit of electronic devices this video is put up in uh, two parts first part describes the related equations and the underlying concepts used in the present topic and the second part consists of solution to some gate problems sometimes uh, more than one problem of similar nature is taken up in one video so we will start uh, with the first part of this uh, video here the unit is electronic devices and uh, semiconductor physics is considered to be the first subunit of this electronic devices now we study about the uh, solids and the solids are being divided uh, based on the electrical conductivity they are put in as insulators or semiconductors or conductors these are the three categories of the solids and uh, it is observed that our uh, interest here is on semiconductors if we see the resistivities the values given here typical values for the case of glass the resistivity 9 in 10 to 11 ohm meter the semiconductor has a resistivity of 0.63 ohm meter and the copper is having 1.72 10 power minus 8 ohm meter what we find here the resistivity which is inverse of the conductivity is in between the insulators and conductors for the semiconducting materials so we can say the semiconductors have the conductivity or resistivity between insulators and the conductors then uh, we are more interested in finding the properties of semiconductors uh, one of the very important property of semiconductors is negative temperature coefficient of resistance that means resistance decreases with the rise in temperature this normally is not there with the normal conductors number two adding impurities uh, property change appreciably that means even the small impurities when they are added to the semiconductors their properties are appreciably changed and the third very important uh, point is the atoms are bound by the covalent bonds in the case of a normal semiconductor and the, uh, these covalent bonds are formed by the sharing of uh, valence electrons now uh, we can see that uh, in the case of uh, uh, solids uh, mostly in semiconductor we observe that valence band is mostly full conduction band is almost empty at the room temperature and it is observed, observed that at room temperature uh, the number of electrons per atom is like 1 in 10 to 10 atoms the number of electrons available number of electrons available is 1 in 10 to the power 10 atoms so such a small number of electron is available at the room temperature since the thermal energy of the electron is, is kT at the room temperature which is about 0 0.0 26 electron volts which is much smaller than the energy gap we have seen that the we distinguish 
the conductors, insulators, and semiconductors by the by the band theory, and uh, the band gap is the deciding factor whether the uh, uh, material is semiconductor, conductor, or insulator. So, in the case of uh, semiconductors, the band gap, the gap between the conduction band and the valence band, this is the band gap, is around 1.1 electron volt for silicon, and it is 0.72 electron volts for germanium. While in the case of uh, um, insulators, uh, this band gap could be up to 15 electron volts. It could be up to 15 electron volts in the case of a, in the case of insulators. Now, uh, one more important point here to notice is that when we uh, move an electron, when we move an electron from the valence band to the conduction band, the electron has come to the conduction band, but it has left a hole in the in the valence band. So, this is very important. Whenever a electron leaves the valence band, hole is created in the valence band. Now, uh, we see uh, different kind of uh, semiconductors. Now, uh, we take a case of intrinsic semiconductor. This is supposed to be a pure semiconductor, and uh, it's an extremely pure semiconductor, and uh, its uh, uh, density of uh, electrons per unit volume typically is given 9.65 into 10 to the power 9 per centimeter cube for silicon. This is the kind of density of electrons available. Now, one of the very important uh, law here is the law of mass, mass action law. This uh, indicates that in the case of uh, uh, semiconductors which are in thermal equilibrium, the product of the whole the product of the electron and the hole concentration is always equal to the square of the intrinsic carrier concentration. This is a very important relation. One of the very important relations is very frequently used in solving many of the gate problems. Now, uh, we will try to see the movement of the carriers, the movement of the carriers is by two mechanisms, one is uh, drift and other is by diffusion. So, we will see this uh, drift basically so shows the flow of current in semiconductor by uh, drift mechanism. That means, uh, when we put an electric field uh, on a semiconductor uh, material, uh, the uh, conductors, the electrons, or the carriers drift. So, uh, Vn say is the drift velocity is proportional to the electric field, and uh, here mu n is the constant. Uh, so, what we observe here, Vn is minus mu n e, and similarly for holes we can write here as mu p into e. This is the uh, drift velocity for the holes. Now, now we can notice his notice here, but you can find the uh, you can find the uh, current density here. Like uh, you can find the current density J n, the current density to electron as Q n and V n. Q n we substitute for V n. This is Q n mu n e. Similarly, for holes, the uh, whole current density is q p mu p e. Uh, you can write the conductivity that could be written as uh, current density over e 
so these are the conductivities for the electrons and the holes suppose there are both kinds of carriers both electrons and holes in a semiconductor you can write the total conductivity here that is sigma is called sigma n plus sigma p and uh, this is q n mu n you can simplify and uh, if it is intrinsic semiconductor you can write n is equal to p is equal to ni so ni q mu n plus mu p this is the equation for the sigma i for intrinsic semiconductor now what we observe here if we observe the mobility values for germanium for uh, electrons and holes we observe here the mobility of electrons is higher than that of uh, uh, holes similarly the in silicon also there is a marked difference between the mobility of the uh, um, electrons and the holes that means electrons are more mobile as compared to holes now there is another mechanism that is said to be diffusion and that diffusion comes in effect uh, uh, is uh, because of uh, uh, because of the concentration gradient uh, movement of carriers uh, from high concentration to low concentration is uh, called a diffusion and basically it depends upon this uh, gradient of concentration and this is diffusion constant and Q is the charge charge of the carrier so uh, you can find the uh, uh, diffusion constant and can determine the value of uh, the current uh, which is a diffusion current now a very important relation which has appeared uh, which relates uh, both uh, the uh, parameters mu n and dn the diffusivity and the mobility this relation said Weinstein's relation so relating both diffusion and mobility so this is dn is kt over q mu n this is a very important relation now uh, if the uh, current is carried by both uh, by the drift due to electric field and for the gradient uh, there is a diffusion so the total current you can write current density for electron and this is for the whole and uh, you can write the total current density total current density is Jn plus Jp what we notice here is here why this negative sign because positive holes whole gradient if it is dp by dx is positive it will give current in the negative direction that's why this uh, factor is negative here there is another uh, very important relation that's the Lorentz force equation Lorentz force equation it is said that uh, the force exerted on a charge particle Q moving with velocity V through an uh, electric field E and the magnetic field B and this is the kind of force experienced on uh, that uh, Q charge this concept is being used uh, for the case of uh, Hall effect so we'll see that how this uh, could be related uh, or how it could be uh, used uh, with the case of Hall effect uh, what we observe here is there is semiconductor material which is of a P type sample and these are the coordinate direction this is X this is Z direction and this is a Y coordinate this is a right handed uh, coordinate system the electric field is applied in the X direction because of this voltage and magnetic field is in the Z direction and uh, it's a P type of sample using the Lorentz force equation we can write here QEY equals to Q 
Q V cross B. Now Q cancels here. E Y is equals to V X B Z. Now this E Y is the electric field which is uh, generated due to the Hall's voltage. So this is E Y into W. So you can uh, uh, establishment of the field here is basically called the Hall effect and you can this is the Hall voltage you can find the Hall voltage and uh, this Hall effect has been very much useful for uh, determining the existence of holes this has been used for that and you could also use it for finding the carrier concentration you can use it for finding the carrier concentration and there are some problems uh, we'll see on the Hall effect and those problems have been uh, uh, quite useful now uh, this is uh, one of the very important topic uh, uh, although we are not uh, considering a lot of uh, mathematical details here uh, we are talking about Fermi distribution this happens with the intrinsic uh, semiconductor also with the semiconductors uh, which is extrinsic in nature that means uh, with impurities uh, uh, in it uh, this equation is said to be Fermi distribution Fe is 1 over 1 plus e to the power e minus e f over kt this is a Fermi distribution what the state says Fe indicates here the probability that electron occupies a state with energy E. An electron having energy E will be occupied uh, with what probability? This indicates the probability of it. Now, if we assume that the value for E minus EF is greater than 3 kT, this exponential term would be much higher than 1. So we can write this equation in this form. If E minus EF is uh, less than 3 kT we can write it uh, into this form then this term would be much smaller and you can uh, take in on the numerator and expand it now uh, there are another uh, very important governing relation you can find the electron density in the conduction band by N NC exponential minus EC minus EF over kT here NC is the number of states in the conduction band available states in the conduction band and similarly the whole density in the conduction band could be evaluated through this equation NC and NV are indicating, indicating the number of available states in the respective band you see the number of states available is much higher like 2.86 in per 19 per centimeter cube 2.66 in 10 per 19 per centimeter cube this is in the conduction band this is in the valence band so you can notice here the available uh, uh, states are much higher than the uh, what is occupied by the uh, mobile charges now for the case of intrinsic semiconductor EF equals to EI EI the intrinsic uh, uh, formulable then this is given as EC plus EV divided by 2 plus KT by 2 LN NV by, NV by NC this term is small so you can write EF equal to EI is equal to EC plus EV divided by 2 so you can determine the value of uh, uh, Fermi label uh, for the intrinsic semiconductor it is in between the uh, bottom of the conduction band and the top of the valence band divided by 2 so this Fermi label lies for intrinsic semiconductor in the center of the band gap so by uh, knowing some of these uh, governing equations and maybe some more uh, equations if anything is left out we'll uh, do it with the respective problem whenever we'll be discussing problem uh, we'll again uh, recall these equations or if some additional equations are needed we'll take care of those equations and try to solve the problems Okay, thank you, please.